thank you, Lord, for that truth that you are always there for us, that we can follow you. Amen. Amen. Do have a seat. I don't know how that happened, Jill. It was nothing to do with me. <laughs> oh, my. I, I, I'll have a word from all afterwards. All right. I know, I know you don't like the attention being drawn to yourself, so you're very naughty. Oh, brilliant. Uh, we are going to be thanking God now for Aria and Heidi. So uh, as we... Uh, why don't you guys come up and join us? Where's Sarah? Come and join us. Uh, How are we doing? <laughs> You're fine, all right? <laughs> there we go. So how old is Aria? How old are you? Sorry. Three. Oh, look at that dress. You look very pretty today. <laughs> she also looks quite shy and like, who is this guy? <laughs> but we're going to be getting on okay. And Heidi, how old is Heidi? Seven months wow. next week. Fantastic. Actually, why don't you come over here so they can see you? Because you're sort of stuck out of the way over there, aren't you? Come over. Because actually they want to see you and not me. They don't, they don't even want to see Jill at this point. We see enough. No one wants to see us anymore. They just want to see Heidi. Yeah, that happens, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Not that I'm you know, uninterested in seeing my, my own children later on, but the grandchild would definitely take precedence. So. Fantastic. As ever, guys, we've got some words on the screen that we're going to have. If the words are in uh, yellow, then you get to join in. Um, and later on, um, uh, these guys will also say literally a couple of words. So uh, when's the baptism? Remind me. Uh, next Sunday. Next Sunday. Yeah, I should probably be there, shouldn't I? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I am this family's personal priest, by the way, just to let you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, when's the baptism? Uh, 9th of July. We got there you go, that'd be great, looking forward to that. Fantastic. So, um, we are here today to give thanks for our ear and for Heidi. God became one of us in Jesus and understands all that surrounds the arrival and upbringing of children. It's God's purpose that children should know love but within the stability of their home, grow in faith and come at last to the eternal city where his love remains, reigns supreme. I think this is a classic part of our Bible about children. When Jesus is, is preaching, the children are trying to get to him. Um, and the disciples, because they always screw up the disciples, don't they? The disciples say no. And he says, let them come to me. Can you imagine that? In our, in, can you imagine that yesterday in the ordination? If, the, if one of the kids had run up to the bishop, would he, would he? Actually, I think he probably would. I think he probably would have welcomed them. Uh, but our children are not to be shut away from our faith, but actually to be welcomed into it. Jesus said, let the children come to me. Do not stop them. And so we thank God for Ari and Heidi. The works of the Lord are great. His mercy endures forever. Mary gave birth to a child and called him Jesus. He will save his people from their sins. He will be called the Prince of Peace. His kingdom will last forever. Loving God, you hold all things in life and call us into your kingdom of peace. Help us to walk the path of your truth and fill our lives with gratitude and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. It's quite appropriate that we started with that question, isn't it? What was the best thing that happened this week? We thank God for all that is good. So you guys, you receive Aria and you receive Heidi as a gift from God. You do? Great. Do you wish to give thanks to God and seek his blessing? We do. Fantastic. That's it. You're done now. I'll just... <laughs> God, our creator, we thank you for the wonder of new life and for the mystery of human love. We thank you for all those whose support and skill surround and sustain the beginning of life. We thank you that we are known to you by name and loved to you from all eternity. Known by name. Aria is known by name. Heidi is known by name. She's not that impressed with my order of service. So. <laughs> she really likes it. <laughs> she really likes it. 
We thank you for Jesus Christ who's opened to us the way of love. We praise you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. As Jesus took children into his arms and blessed them. So now we ask... Actually, Jill, can you just join me? Why don't you bless our area as I bless Heidi? As Jesus took in his arms and blessed them. So we ask God's blessing on Aria and Heidi. Heavenly Father, we praise you for Aria and Heidi's birth. Surround them with your blessing that they may know your love, be protected from evil, and know your goodness all their days. Amen. Amen. May Aria and Heidi learn to love all that is true, grow in wisdom and strength, and in due time come through faith and baptism in a couple of weeks to the fullness of your grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So receive, I'll give it to Mum. Receive this book. It is the good news of God's love. Take it as your guide. And so we're going to pray for Ara and Heidi. And in a moment, I'm going to allow anyone who wants to pray to pray out loud. Um, so be thinking about that. God, our Creator, we thank you for the gift of Ari and Heidi, entrusted to their parents' care. May they be patient and understanding. I'm guessing you might need some prayers for that. <laughs> Ready to guide and to forgive so that through their love they may know your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, if anyone who wants to pray out loud, let's just take a moment, or, in, or, in, or quietly in your heart, let's just pray for our in heart. Father God, we thank you for Aria and we thank you for Heidi and we just thank you for the blessings that they are. And Lord, we thank you that we welcome them as your children. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for, for these, your children, just having a picture of a running river. We thank you for the water of life uh, that you bless them with in a couple of weeks. Amen. Amen. So, my friend, <laughs> the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your heart. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Fantastic. We've got to welcome into the church. Oh, you got it. We just need to welcome them properly to our church. There is one Lord, one faith. We welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same Heavenly Father. We welcome you. Yes, now you can give another prayer. For <laughs> Fantastic. Well, you Poor old Ari, you can go and have a seat now. <laughs> well done. <laughs> oh dear. We love a good Thanksgiving here, don't we, sir? So. Our, our young people who want to are going to go out to their groups to continue their worship. They have an excellent person this week to lead them. It's Jerry. Je- <laughs> I'm not saying Jerry's not excellent, but my wife is also excellent. <laughs> so if you're, if you're going out to your groups, come on, we're going and we're... Uh, we're going to lose our percussionist for a while. He'll be back, I'm sure. <laughs> Why don't you stretch out a hand? It's just a simple saying, we agree with this prayer. So, Father, thank you for these guys and all that you do for them as they continue their worship in their group. Would you bless them beyond all measure? Amen. Amen. See you soon, guys. Right, we're going to sing a couple of songs now. Just to say, uh, we'll start off by standing if you're able to, but actually you don't have to be stood up. If you want to sit down at any point, uh, especially with the heat, uh, do feel free to. But let's worship our Lord in song.
thank you that you are holy and yet you seek us. You are holy and yet you seek our love to be returned to you. Let's take a moment just as we stand in between our songs just to come before our God, just to bring to him whatever's going on in your life right now. Whether that's good or bad, whether you're happy and proud or perhaps sad or ashamed, just place that in the arms of our loving God. Lord, we receive your forgiveness. We receive your joyousness. We receive your love. Amen. Amen. Do have a seat. Right, we're going to turn to Scripture. Colin's going to come up and read us our first read. Put him on the spot as he walked into the church. Is it the only reading? It's not the only reading. There is one to follow as well. But I haven't set you up with that one. So the first reading is taken from Matthew chapter 22, verses 23 to 40. That same day the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him with a question. Teacher, they said, Moses told us that if a man dies without having children, his brother must marry the widow and have children for him. Now there were seven brothers among us. The first one married and died, and since he had no children, he left his wife to his brother. The same thing happened to the second and the third brother, right on down to the seventh. Finally, the woman died. Now then, at the resurrection, whose wife will she be at the seventh, since all of them were married to her? Jesus replied, You are in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. At the resurrection, people will neither marry 
nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. But about the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what God said to you? I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. When the crowds heard this, they were astonished at his teaching. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment of the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Colin. We're going to have our second reading as well now. We're going to have our reading from Jeremiah. from Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 31 to 34 The time is coming declares the Lord when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant though I was a husband to them declares the Lord. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbour or a man his brother saying, know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, Tracy went to a concert last night. Any guesses which one she went to? (laughs) She may have gone to see Pink last night. There is a remote chance that happened. Excellent. Let's take a moment just to pray. Father, would you speak to us in our hearts and our minds, like we know your spirit here, your presence here. And as we open up your scriptures, would you reveal your will for us, we pray. Amen. Amen. Excellent. Well, um, I was praying about what I... Yeah, I do pray before I preach, by the way, just in case you ever wondered. I was praying... <laughs> Praying about um, uh, what we might be sharing today, uh, what God might be saying to us. Um, and uh, last November, uh, our new priest here uh, um, spoke on Luke 20, um, when she spoke about uh, marriage at the resurrection. So the good news is, I get to avoid that slightly difficult topic, because <laughs> she did a great cracking job on it, and it's a parallel verse uh, to the one we had today. So if you want to go in and hear about marriage at the resurrection, uh, go to the website. Jill did a cracking job on that already. However, it did only leave me with uh, Matthew 23, 34 to 40. And how many times have you heard these words? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And love your neighbour as yourself. I wonder how many times... You've heard that. You know, it's got me to thinking, and I calculate that if you are a regular churchgoer, maybe going most weeks, missing some holidays, but having extras at the festivals, I reckon you probably hear somewhere in the region of 50 sermons a year, which is 500 a decade. 
which means if you've been a follower of Jesus or a churchgoer for over 20 years, you've heard over a thousand sermons. And I know some of you are beyond that. <laughs> Taking a conservative estimate of 10 minutes per sermon, and I can hear you saying, I wish. <laughs> But taking a conservative estimate of 10 minutes a sermon, that means that you've listened to over 10,000 minutes of someone like me up here. 166 hours or one continuous week in 20 years. And as I said, I reckon some of you have heard a few more than that. Which is why I do pray, God, what can I tell them? What can I share with them that they haven't already heard and as I prayed that I just felt that God might be saying to me exactly Max now you know my pain it's as though as we in our generation see ourselves as more enlightened than those fellow followers of Christ who have gone before us which of course actually is a fallacy and is not true but nevertheless we do see ourselves as more enlightened and yet we make the same mistakes that those of us, those have gone before us, make. The cycle just goes on and on. You know, if we look at the overarching story of the scriptures that we love so much, they are an overarching story of God sharing his love, of wanting to share his love with us and have us in return love him. It's a story of him saying, here are ten commandments. If you can live by these, then you will see my kingdom come, not just in your own life, but also in your community. Now, of course, being human, we added another 603 commandments to those ten commandments, because, heck, now why make knowing God easy when you can make it difficult? Isn't it? But nevertheless... It's a story of love from our God. And for hundreds of years, God has been sending leaders um, into Israel and into our life to share his love with us. And eventually, Jesus turns up and says, Do you know, guys, actually there is only one commandment. Love God. Love God is, is the one commandment. And if you love God, of course, you're going to love God's creation. You're going to love Ari. You're going to love Heidi. You're going to love the people around you because you're going to love his creation. And if you can love God and love people, everything else will flow from that. It's a story of love that we've turned into a story of rules. In Mark's version of the passage that we heard today, the, um, the man says, You are right in saying that God is one, and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart and with all your understanding and with your strength, and love your neighbour as yourself, is more important than all the burnt offerings, all the sacrifices. It's more important than all the preaching, all the standing behind the lectern, all the sweeping the floors, to love is more important than that. And the response that Jesus has for that man is, you know, you're not far from the kingdom. You know, you're not far from the kingdom. It's not rocket science, is it? And yet, why do I feel that God still has pain and mourns over that very one commandment? It got me to thinking, and I had a mentor when I was in business. I had a mentor who would help me with my business. And it got me to think about times with him. He would say to me, Max, if you do this, and then you do that, this will happen. And it'll be good for your business. And I would go, yeah, 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 that's good, yep, I know that. And then I'd meet him again six months later, and he'd go, Max, if you do this, and you do this, this will happen. And I go, yep, 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 I know that, I know that, got that. And then one day, I think out of sheer exasperation, he said to me this. He quoted a Chinese scholar to me. He said, Max, to know and not to act is to not know. 
To know and to not to act is to not know. He was basically saying, you can have all the knowledge in your head, you can, have, you can, do all, you can read all you want to read, but if you don't actually do it, Max, you won't get a change in results. You won't get a change in your life. He was saying to me, if I wanted to change my life, I needed to change my life. I needed to do something. And I think that's where we find Jesus today. I think we've had all these leaders come and go throughout Israel's history. And then Jesus finally says, love God. Doesn't matter, does it? Doesn't matter how many sermons we've heard. Doesn't matter how many times we've been into a church building. I remember someone saying to me, going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than going to the garage makes you a car. It doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't matter how many books I've read, how often I've read my Bible. It doesn't matter how many times I sit quietly. If I don't act upon it, if we don't act upon it, then nothing is going to change. If we want change in our lives, then we need to change our lives. If we want change in our church, then we need to change our church. We've seen the results of that, haven't we? We've seen a determination to change parts of what we do, and God bless that. If you want change in your life, then you need to change something in your life. That's all I wanted to share today. So it will be an under 10 minute sermon. You'll be glad about that. But what do we do with that information as we go today? Well, I have good news for you. You can do absolutely nothing with that information. You can say, oh, that's just another great sermon. Well, or another ordinary sermon, whichever you choose. <laughs> you can say, it was, you know, Max got out there and got a bit passionate again. He does that at times, doesn't he? But we love him because he's not a bad guy and, and we can forgive him that. So you can do nothing with it and you'll be just the same next week as you are this week. That'll be fine. Or today could be the day that you finally accept that God loves you beyond all measure. Today could be the day that you finally think, do you know, he really does love me and all I've really got to do is love him and love my neighbour. I said last week, didn't I? I said last week, if we love one another like we're supposed to love one another, we won't get to stop people crowded into this building because they will see by the way that we love one another, that we are the disciples of Jesus. I'm not going to ask you to stand up if you make a decision to do something about that, if you make a decision to change. I'm not going to drag you up here and ask you to stand up. But in a moment, we are going to spend a little bit of time quiet. The babies will cry, that's what they do. That's fine. But don't let that distract you. We're just going to spend a bit of time in quiet. I might ask Mike to play you something in the background if that helps you. And I want you to ask God what it is for you that you need to do next. Because I believe there are some who will hear him say, you are not far from the kingdom. And there are some of us that need to move on to the next step. So we're going to be quiet for a bit. And if during that time, God says something to you, or you think, oh, where did that come from? Trust that it might be the Holy Spirit and not just last night's pizza. Trust that actually he might be speaking to you. Speak to Jill, our newly priested curate. Speak to me afterwards. Speak to someone here that you can trust and just say I think God might have said to me I'm ready to move on so what's the next step for me because you may not be far from the kingdom so let's just be quiet and I'll invite God's spirit to speak to us and then in a few moments we'll carry on with our service if it helps you might want to close your eyes, you don't have to, but you might want to. You might want to hold your hands out that you're receiving a gift 
Again, you don't have to, but it might help you. Holy Spirit, would you speak to us? Would you guide us? Would you tell us what it is to love you more? Would you speak to us individually? Just stay where you are, remain seated, we're going to sing a song, but it'd be a good song to continue to be in the presence of God with.
band has just come up and shared some words that have come to her and a picture that's come to her during our prayer time. Now, when, when this happens, sometimes this happens when we're praying, it happens to me and others, and we just open it, offer it open-handed to our God to say this might be for someone in the room. And we trust the Spirit will, will confirm that in us. So Vanda's image is of Moses striking the rock and the water gushing out of it. And of someone perhaps thinking, actually, is God going to do this? But actually, if they offer themselves to him, if they move forward in that, they will see a gushing of that water, that love from God in their lives. Now, so if this is something that you think, oh, that might be me, and it could be more than one, we don't know, God works in many different ways, um, then again, let me encourage you to be bold and speak to someone. Just ask them, so that might have been me, and we'll just say a brief prayer for you later on, but speak to Jill and myself, or anyone that around here, they're all, they're all okay, guys. So as we, um, as we ponder that, let's uh, sing that last verse again. Continue straight into our prayers and not lose this moment with God's Spirit. So as I pray, I may leave some space for you to lift your own silent prayers to God. Thank you that you are in this place, that your Spirit is with us, Father, Son, and Spirit. We come to our world and we look at our world and we think we need more of you in it. We need more of you in our world. We lift you those who are mourning the loss of the men lost on the sub. And Lord, but we know they they were not alone on our seas and we see refugee boats going down almost daily and we lift you all those who seek to find a better life. We pray for the families of those lost even this week. We pray that you would, would move in to disrupt the people smugglers. We pray that you would turn hearts, our hearts towards the refugee. That our love will be an expression of your love for them. And just in a moment of silence, we lift the areas of the world upon our hearts to our God. And Lord, we, we come to our country and, and we, we look around and we see trouble there. But we thank you as we look at other places like Ukraine and Russia and all that's going on. We thank you that we live in relative peace. We pray for you to be with those who are seeking peace for Ukraine and Russia. But also we want that same peace in our country. Would you turn your politicians towards serving, serving you and serving the people they represent? We thank you for all that is good in our country, all that is bountiful and plenty. Again, we bring what's on our hearts about our country to our God.
And we bring to you Bed Hanson, and we thank you for the celebration of Jill's ordination as priest yesterday. We thank you for all of those ordained yesterday across the country. People who are chosen to act, to serve you. We ask your blessing particularly on Jill's ministry. Would you bless her beyond her hopes? Would you bless her beyond even what she's expecting? And we lift you those who are ill in our, that we know in our parish, praying for your healing upon them. We thank you for, for healing, for people coming out of hospital, for young ones coming home. But we ask for more. We know you are a good God who seeks to love us, and we ask for more of your healing. Guide our parish, guide our leaders, guide all who seek to serve you. And we lift to you again what's on our hearts in our lives and in our parish. And Father, we come before you with our own hearts. You know what's in our lives, the good and the bad, the things we celebrate and the things we worry about. Help us change our lives so that we might see a change in our lives. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Trace, would you nip out and let Susie know we're finishing off? That'd be great. Um, what's happening next Saturday? Tracy knows. <laughs> Come on, guys. First Saturday of, the, of July. Everyone knows the summer show's on. Uh, summer show next Saturday um, we have a few leaflets that do need to go out not a lot of good if they go out after next Saturday they need to go out this week uh, so um, do grab one of those and uh, lose, you know, lose a few calories as you go around that's what I've been doing uh, delivering those so they're out there do grab those it would be great to see all those go today otherwise, uh, otherwise my poor dog's going to get overwalked in the heat of the sun so no he won't I wouldn't do that to him uh, so that's the next Saturday. They are, they are asking, because we've got uh, less parking in this year than we have in the past, if you can leave your cars at home, that would be awesome. Uh, so do try and do that. But actually, whatever happens, do come along and celebrate. Most of the summer show is put on by uh, people who don't actually come regularly on a Sunday. So what a great witness to them if we just go around. Just go around and, on the day and just thank them for doing it. I mean, there is a shortage of volunteers. You may have read the bit in the paper yesterday that I wrote. For, but there's a shortage of volunteers in our, in our life now, around not just in church, but across the board. Why don't we just thank people for doing what they do? Wouldn't that be great? So uh, do go around and do that. And um, also, I believe uh, the new priest um, uh, is leading the Mother's Union service on Tuesday. Uh, that's in the notice sheet. Um, and then just being a humble rector, I, I, I have cut the grass ready for the tea party at my place afterwards. So, uh, um, anything else, Tracy? I need to be... Messy Church. Messy Church, thank you very much. Loads going on. Messy Church next week. Yep. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's our patronal service soon, St Thomas as well. Um, and I said, oh, wouldn't it be nice to have uh, Messy Church about St Thomas? Uh, I'm in real trouble with the Messy Church leaders, so... Uh, <laughs> It would be really good if you could encourage them as well. Because uh, actually there was only so much you can say about St Thomas, apparently. But we're, they've done a great job of getting ready for Messy Church. Do, do come along to that as well. Come in, guys. Come in. We've been uh, waiting for you. So uh, here we are. Susie, do you want to come and share with us what you've been up to? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe not. No. But if, it's only I've got a migraine and my mouth doesn't right. always correspond. Um, we've been talking about David and how he went into the cave when Saul went for a wee and how he could have slit his throat and killed him, but he listened to God and um, did what God wanted to. So the children have thought about things they want God to help them with. Lily, can I just borrow you with your, your sheep? Oh, he's roughy as well. Yep. So what they've done is 
they, on their hearts, they've put what they want God to help them with, and they're like balloons, so they're going up to God, their prayers, and they're going to pray about it um, over the next week, aren't you? With, oh, all right? Excellent. Yeah. Thank right. you. Don't Thank run, you. Don't Thank run away, guys. Good. Come here. Back, 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 back. Susie's got a migraine. Yeah. When Susie gets a migraine, she goes blind. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to pray, aren't we? So why don't you put a hand on her shoulder. Come on, Jack, come and join us. Put a hand on her shoulder. And we will just pray for Thank God you. to heal Susie's migraine. Jesus, we know you are a healing God. Would you heal Susie? We pray. Amen. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks. Something that Susie's had to live with her whole... Well, uh, actually, it's ever since having children, wasn't it? Before that. Oh, I'll be excited. It was not... <laughs> It was not when she met me. There's no... We've got you know, guys coming here seeing this for the first time. There's no respect, guys. There's no respect. I love being here. I love it. Right, let's stand as we sing our last song together. Christ is our peace. If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.